Hi guys, welcome back to another studio video. Today we're taking a look at the Thermaltake Cool X9 case. Now, I have done a video on one of these recently. I did it on the orange one over here. But uh, the one we'll be checking out today is the standard stock black one that comes straight from the factory. So the reason why I want to do a video on this one here is I want to show you sort of how it comes in its raw form. As the previous video I did on the orange one was, uh, was as it was now. So I'd already done the painting. Uh, some modifications inside. I'd actually stripped down a lot of the gear that comes in it so you didn't really get a good idea of how it comes straight from the factory. So with this one here because I have this second one now before I start doing a build in this one I want to sort of uh, jump in and show you how, how it comes straight from the factory in terms of uh, radiator support, uh, how many fans you can put in the dual power supply support and you sort of your hard drive and SSD options and uh, if we do have time in the review and it doesn't go too long, I'll see how we can stack these because uh, the new Core X9 and the X2 series, they, they're all uh, stackable within the same model. So it'll be keen to see how they sort of join together. So we'll just jump in now and we'll have a look. Alrighty, so we'll start with the left side panel and we'll sort of move our way around the case. So now if you haven't seen the first video on the orange system and you're keen to see what a build looks like, I'll suggest going to uh, check out that one. I'll throw the link up in the description so you can see that. Um, just to uh, get an idea, I'm, I'll try not to try and duplicate what I did in that video. Uh, I'll just sort of specify some of the more of the stock things that you get in this case. Uh, so first off, the side panel. I really like the large side panel. You can sort of display your whole gear. Now this side panel is uh, reversible to the other side panel, so you can switch them, uh, which is a neat little option, which I think. Uh, now it does have this uh, this protective uh, stuff on it, just this sort of sticker, and it's on this side as well, and you can just pull that off. Alright, so now you can see inside, we won't sort of focus on the inside just yet. We'll sort of move our way around. Alright, so moving on to the, uh, moving on to more towards the front. So we have your power, your four USB. So it's good that they've scrapped all the USB 2. So the four USB 3. You've got your headphones, your microphone, and we have your reset button. And then we have your power LED and the, uh, hard drive LED so that's nice on there and a little feature that not many people know is this little block here um, can be uh, interchangeable on the uh, on the other side so you can see it goes it can go in here as well so I think that's a really neat feature depending on whether your desk is on if you have your PC on the left of your monitor or the right of your monitor you can simply take this side panel off put the put the clear one on put your power and reset on this side and then and then you're good to go and then vice versa there's not really many cases out there that actually uh, support that feature now moving on to the little accessory bag you get uh, for such a huge case I really thought you may have got some more accessories but I guess with this modular case like this sort of everything's included inside especially some things with these uh, hard drive mounts and the actual radiator brackets are underneath here and this is what I wanted to show you because in the uh, in the other one I had it I sort of sort of removed them so it wasn't uh, wasn't as easy to, to demonstrate pulling those out plus I already had hardware in there so I couldn't sort of just swap things out now apart from your standard screws uh, zip ties you get a speaker and whatnot you also get this weird looking thing now this here is quite good um, I wasn't quite sure what this was at first uh, because this this case is quite large at the front they actually give you up to a 360 more radiator support in the front but um, at the moment, you can see you could only fit a 240, but if you remove the three five and a quarter inch uh, drive bag cater that's inside, you can mount this bracket on the inside, and this will allow you to uh, fit a 360 mil rad, and it will give you the rad support to screw it in up the top. So it'll simply go in like that, and then you can run your rad down to the bottom, and it'll allow you to screw it in. So I find that a, uh, a nice little feature that they've done. Now taking the front panel off is pretty much similar to most uh, thermal tech cases. You just give it a really good pull down the bottom. Now I've already uh, pulled it off because it makes a whacking loud noise. But uh, but yeah, it just comes off and you can just see the inside there. Now this mesh is, uh, this outer mesh is completely removable. Um, it's good for, for modding. I did paint uh, I did paint the other one I had orange. So it just have to undo a ton of the uh, the little flaps that are bent over and then you've got this uh, filter in here which can come out you just sort of slide it out from the grooves which is nice and then you've got your three uh your three five and a quarter inch uh, dry bag covers and then they also have foam on as well and then there's even more mesh uh, behind here as well so there's mesh covering everything uh, mainly for that for the front because you can fit uh on the front you can fit two uh two 200 more fans 
So you can see here you've got the one already pre-installed and then you can see you've got the outline for one wall to go here providing you do remove the uh, the uh, the three K cage uh, five and a quarter inch bay caddy in there and you can fit the other one there or as I said before you can fit the radiator in the front so that's a nice little nifty option there and then you can also see how I said before with the power the power options can go here and here same with the USB so it's really nice you can just sort of rip this sort of chunk off and switch it on each side all right so moving on more to the front so as I said earlier you can have your three uh, your three uh, CD-ROMs or your three reservoirs or you can fit a double reservoir up to three devices in the front there and it's also nice to know that uh, you can actually fit one three and a half inch drive in each of the uh, CD-ROM base so they just simply go in like that and you can screw them in the uh, in the center from underneath so you can fit one two three or uh, what I also like each one I'll actually just uh, pull one out and see so it is good that each of these uh, drive caddies are individual so it's not a whole three uh, three cage in the block like some cases you get so this is the cage once it comes out so you can just have one in you can have all three in and then as I said before you can fit a standard uh, three and a half inch drive depending on um, like that just lines up with the holes or what I like is they've got the option to fit the two uh, two SSDs on one uh, on one sort of caddy so one two so if you are removing all the hard drives down the bottom because it does support six we'll move on to those later on you've got the option of putting up to say uh, six SSDs or the three uh, three three and a half inch drives you could have four SSDs and the one mechanical drive in the uh, in the top there so it's really nice that they've done that and now we just got some grommets on each side here because if you're running your uh, IO on this side or this side you're going to need some grommets one last thing before we move it around to the other side so radiator support on uh, on the front is the 360 millimeter or the 280 so that's up to 360 so it'll be every increment down from a 360 a two uh, a 240 or a 120 and same with the two, 280 you can fit a 140 as well okay so moving on onto this side as I said before side panels are um, reversible each side so you can put the window on this side if you really wanted to um, because with, with a case set up like this uh, just got to undo these screws the screws are in really tight uh, so with a case like this where your motherboard sits flat uh, you, you, you're not really, really going to have a bad spot like most cases you have behind the motherboard tray so you're not going to want a window on that side but with a case like this it's really not going to change whether you have your window on this side or this side it just depends whether you want to see your VGA card at the back here or you want to see more towards your uh, your CPU right so I did put that side panel down one thing before I put this side panel away now there is mesh uh, filters on pretty much every area that has ventilation on this case so they've done a really good job to keep uh, to keep that in, intact so these are just the magnetic ones that can go on so you can use these you don't have to use them I do like these mag magnetic ones especially using them on a nice flat surface like this they stay really nicely um, it'd be a bit annoying if they had those uh, the hard ones that slide in and out but it is good that they've uh, included those okay so looking at this side you can just pretty much see ex exactly the same the uh, the hard drives can uh, can go on this side as well but uh, we'll move on to that a little bit later on to the internals We'll just move around to the back and then we'll have a look at the top. All right, so moving on to the back, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got your eight uh, PCI slots. Now this will fit uh, this will fit uh, your workstation boards up to uh, up to ones that can do uh, seven cards. So it'll only fit up to eight slots maximum. So it's not going to fit a high-end server board that needs the full uh, ten or eleven slots. But uh, for most uh, for most people's uses, that'll be uh, that'll work fine. I do I do use a dual socket uh, Asus board, and um, and it would fit in here, so it's good that that'll fit. And moving on to the fan support on the back, so this is a standard uh, 120, and it'll fit a 140 mil fan, and that's the same as a radiator support as well, 120 or 140. Oh, we've got some grommets here. I guess these are for uh, for stacking. I guess if you want to run things into the other case, probably not going to need those for water cooling. I don't think you're going to need external water cooling. Only if you want to run your water cooling to the other case, but you can do that uh, via the uh, inside. Now we have the I/O shield hole there, and then down below we just have your two power supply mounts uh, or your cutouts. So we've got your left one and your right one, and then when you're not using one, you've got this nice blanking plate 
to uh, to cover up the one you're not using. So to undo the top, you just simply got the two uh, the two screws here. Now, if you're probably thinking, can you use the standard side panel to go on the top and vice versa? Uh, you can't. The the top is a different size to the side panel, so you can't put a clear window on the top if um, if you wanted to get rid of these covers. Uh, it doesn't actually fit. I think that would be a pretty sweet option to have uh, a clear window on the top, providing you're not going to be using the fan support up the top. You could be using radiators uh, down below, and you could have a nice window to look through. All right. So uh, from the top, the uh, the radiator support you can straight away see it's humongous support. Uh, you got the same on each side, so you got uh, times two. So the top will fit up to a maximum of a four, uh, 480, so they're your 4 by 120s or it'll fit a maximum of, of a 420, which is your 3 by 140s and then it will fit e each uh, increment down, so it'll fit a 360, a 240, and so on. But you're probably not going to even run a single 120 on here. You'd definitely deck it out. So I've got one of the new Thermal Taker uh, Pacific RL 480 radiators here. Now this is pretty thick. Uh, I'll probably say this is easily 60 millimeters thick and uh, we'll just sort of sit that on top and that pretty much runs the length of that so that's a standard uh, standard length 480 radiator and that's how it looks on top but mind you you wouldn't put it on top I'm just sort of showing you how uh, how it compares to the the overall size of the case but um, one thing I did like because I've, I've already done a bit of a build in one of these cases I really did like the uh, flexibility of being able to uh, to undo these. We'll just show you, and uh, and it does have all the uh, the wording for the right sizes. So here it's got tw uh, twenty, so you can actually fit two uh, two uh, one twenty more fans on each side, uh, or uh, not sorry, one twenty two two hundred mils. Uh, you can fit the 140s go along here and the 120s go along on this slot. So it, it really does help you sort of find out. But installing fans and that is uh, it's pr pretty basic. It's either going to line up or it won't. So you shouldn't have too too many issues. But I do like it how uh, you just got so many holes, uh, sort of the slits. And I, I really do like it that they haven't given you just single holes. It really gives you the flexibility to be able to slide your, your radiators up or down. You can even put, say you had a 240, you literally can install it all the way along wherever you like but um, I found it really good working inside here once I took these two uh, these two top rails off I was able to work on the system inside uh, you don't need a removable motherboard tray because literally once you take this these tops off you've literally got this whole open space to work on the system so that actually made it really nicer uh, and sort of the freedom to do that was good all right so moving on to actually what I was talking about before with the um, these uh, sort of brackets so once you've got your radiator there, it's really handy to be able to install this while it's like on your bench. So you can just get it lined up. So I'm in the uh, the 120 hole size because this is a 480 radiator which uses 120s. And there you can just simply slide this. Um, because this is a larger size radiator to fit in here, I couldn't slide it too much. But I was able to slide it uh, a, f a few millimeters like here or there. And it, to be able to do that, a lot of cases don't do that these days. And, um, and after working on a lot of cases, to be able to move a radiator in a tight spot, even uh, a few few millimeters up or a few millimeters down, uh, it sort of makes a, a whole difference, especially when you've got fans in the area. You might have a, an, another radiator sort of joining it uh, on a right angle, or you might want room for cables. It really does help uh, being able to move uh, move the radiator just a little bit. So that's why I urge companies to keep with the this form of the long sort of slits it really does help when um, when installing your uh, fans and your radiators. Alright, so that's pretty much it on the top. Um, I will look into the stacking probably at the end. I have no idea how you're going to join another case on here. I'm assuming you'd take the feet off and you'd add it on here and it'll go up. But I guess I'll sort of work that out um, before I do that. So now we'll have a look at uh, what's on the inside. So before we jump in at the uh, inside, we'll just have a look at the cables you get for your I.O. At the front, so we have your, because there's four USB 3, we need to have your two uh, USB 3 internal connectors for the motherboard headers. We've got your HD audio, and then we have your power reset hard drive LED and power LED connectors there. So it's nice that they're all black, and this is really long as well. Uh, it's going to fit to, it's probably the longest I've seen in a case before, so it's going to fit uh, probably uh, any scenario you uh, you want the route, route them, so that's good. 
Now, I did say before that the motherboard tray wasn't remo removable. I'm not sure why, because I have actually removed it. You actually just uh, undo the screw here and a screw here. It can actually just slide out like this, and then it comes out. Uh, so you're probably wondering what this area is here. So you do have your cutout for your motherboard. You can remove this sort of contraption here, but this is to mount extra hard drives or SSDs. So what you can do, you can either put in a, a mechanical hard drive in here, three and a half inch, or you can fit an SSD um, in here like so. Or on the other side here, you can fit a three and a half inch drive again, or you can fit uh, you can fit two SSDs um, in the bottom there and there like so. So they've really given you a ton of options to, uh, to so sort of uh, mount SSDs or all, uh, all three and a half inch drives. There's not many sort of companies out there that give you the, the flexibility that if you've got a three and a half inch drive area, you can install either one or two SSDs. So it seems like they've really done a good job in sort of uh, laying that out. All right, so moving on down to the uh, the three and a half inch uh, drive. So it can take uh, six, so it's got two caddies of three. So these just simply come out like this. Um, let's see if I can get, actually if that is stuck on a cable. I'll take the, uh, the middle one out. Now I really do like these ones, they just simply open up like this. Now with these, you can install your hard drive, so it's a bit different than your sort of traditional ones. The hard drives go in sideways, and then they just clip in like so, and then you uh, you just close it back up, and then you slide it in. So I, I do like how they've done that, because this gives you the, uh, the flexibility to be able to have your drive, uh, your sort of SATA connector going this way, or you can have your SATA connector going uh, this way so it really depends where you've got these mounted and I'll show you that you can move these actual uh, cages around to suit uh, to suit your needs and with the three and a half inch as I said before pretty much everywhere where you can fit a three and a half inch you can fit an SSD so once again you can fit an SSD either that way with the SATA coming out or you can fit the SSD uh, that way with the SATA coming out so it's pretty uh, nifty they've uh, got that solution there for you all right, so I won't take uh, any more of those out. They're all the same. Now, to simply undo these caddies, you just undo the uh, the two locking thumb screws. Now, I do like it how everything is used with thumb screws. Now, the thumb screws are a bit tight at first, but um, but once you loosen them with the screwdriver, you can just get them out by hand. So that's one caddy there. Now we'll just get the other one out. Now these caddies can be put on the other side. Uh, you can put one on the other side, or you can put both. Let me just take this one out. All right, that fan was stopping it before. Okay, so now that's your two caddies there, just like that. All right, so now under here, this here is the uh, the mounting spots for your radiator to go on the side, because each side can support up to a 420 or a 480 mil radiator. Now you have to bear in mind that you, you can't have a radiator on each side only because your uh, your power supply has to go on one side, either the left or the right. So they've done it so you can only fit um, you can only fit a radiator on either. Uh, or if you wanted to fit the 460, you got to use the brackets both on this side. And because they only give you two of the brackets, you've got nothing for that side. So you could fit a uh, a 240 here, and then you could use the bracket on on the other side. I guess if you're running two power supplies, but um. But yeah, they just sh shipped you enough to only do uh, do that conf configuration, and uh, and bear in mind that once you do use these uh, these supports for the uh, the radiator, so these just simply go on the uh, on the inside like this, something like um, something like this, and it supports the uh, the radiator to go in. And um, because you've already used this on a radiator, these actual hard drive caddies do mount on these brackets, so. Once you do have a radiator on the side here, you do lose your support for uh, to mount these caddies. Like, bear in mind, like they do sit in there, sit in here fine, but there's really no way for them to uh, to screw down. Like, you could definitely mod something, but they just don't have the option to put these caddies uh, like they do when you actually have these mounted. So that's sort of one little issue, issue I see. I think it's not too too much of an issue because if you're going to deck this out with radiators, you, you've got plenty of other options for your hard drives up the top or the ones which I said under the uh, the motherboard tray. Now these uh, these cages can go both on this side or on uh, this side as well, but you just can't do both at once because you've actually uh, 
you've actually used them but um moving on you can see that the whole bottom now is fully decked out with mesh as well so this is for uh, if you've got radiators on the bottom now the bottom can take a 480 and or a 420 uh, depending on your fan size version but uh, but once again as I said you still need to use these uh, you still need to use these little uh, mounts for any uh, radiators you're putting on the bottom as well so whether you power supply or supplies on this side you need to move it but um, but I really think if they shipped you sort of a, another extra one or two of these uh, these brackets it will give you the flexibility to be able to e e even just to add uh, even just to add a, a radiator on the bottom you had one on the side over here and say you wanted to put your power supply over here you could still put some hard drives on this side they just uh, haven't given you the flexibility to do that which uh, which is it is a bit of a shame but I guess the amount of uh, the amount of options you can actually do already is uh, is quite uh, phenomenal especially compared to most of the other cases out there all right so moving on to the power supply area so you do have a little uh, a little sort of a uh, plate which uh, supports your power supply and this can slide along in certain increments so you just unscrew it so this will support your your radiator uh, sorry not your radiator your power supply so that'll support your power supply uh, depending on which length it is and then moving on towards uh, here you can see you've got this sort of a sort of uh, cover area now this is to uh, this is to sort of uh, when you've got your hard drives in here it just sort of neatens it up a bit so you don't have a whole whole heap of uh, cables sort of running around so to be able to stack the cases you need to take the feet off uh, you just need to take the feet off the, the case that's going on top you leave the feet on the, the very bottom case now I just wanted to show you before I took these off the sheer size of these feet so this is an, an, another one I've already taken off and these things are just huge you also got a nice bit of rubber all the way around and they're really nice and sturdy it's also nice that they're quite high so you've got plenty of ventilation uh, circulating underneath if you've got fans or radiators on the bottom you'll have no issues with uh, getting nice air in and underneath all right so it's just one simple screw same screw uh, thread for your hard drives and that just comes off and then there's two little locating uh, pins as well and that just comes off like that so to stack these cases as well the bottom case you need to undo the screw in each corner so each corner has two rivets and a screw so each corner you need to undo this this screw here because this will then line up with the inside of the uh, of the top case so once you get it on top and um, I've actually zoomed right in at the the hole that you join it with so I've actually the only things I can see to that are long enough to go through the top case and then screw into the bottom case is the the package of screws comes with uh comes with four spare ones of these so uh, i can only assume that uh it's these ones that go through and then you can just tighten them up with your with your thumb and then i just used a, a screwdriver to uh, make sure they were tight okay now one last area where you need to secure the two cases together is at the back here now you can use thumb screws that i've opted to go with just standard case screws purely because they're uh they're sort of more low profile and harder to see so I'll just zoom in so I've actually already got one installed you can see them up here uh, you actually get one of these per case so if you get one case you get one of these little uh, these little things here and then if you get a uh, if you get two uh, have two cases then you'll end up with two and then these just simply screw straight in the back like this one like that And then just another one like this, so this just gives it a slight little bit more support on the back, uh, I guess if you're sliding it and things like that. And then that just secures in like that, so you should have no uh, no issues with these two uh, coming apart at all. All right, so we've got them both stacked together, and you can see that this is absolutely huge. Um, I probably haven't seen anything quite this large until the uh, probably most recent is the CM Stacker series, but um, this is definitely more. Uh, more wider you've got the double width sort of design there much wider and i think the flexibility on what you can do i think with this one you could fit up to uh up to four to six 480 more radiators just with this config and that's just phenomenal considering um each uh th each thermal take core x9 retails for about 210 20 dollars so for just over 400 dollars you've got this col colossal system and um and I've even seen people in the front. You can run a uh, 
you can run, I'll just turn this around. I've actually seen people run a rad from the bottom to the top, so this is a 480. Uh, you could probably yeah, fit some humongous rad going from the bottom to the top. You could even fit two separate ones. Uh, you've even got the rads to, uh, to go on the side. So uh, we, will, we will be doing a build, um, one system in, uh, in this exact same config with the two uh, stacked together. Uh, some of our some of the designs I'm thinking of is to actually uh, it will be a, a modded build so we'll be ro rotating the motherboard tray 45 degrees because I think with the system like this with the motherboard sitting flat especially with the uh, the two stacked together you're not really going to see much of the board so we're going to aim to do a 45 degree motherboard tray starting at the bottom so we'll start at the bottom of the top case and then go up on on 45. Uh, that'll be sitting on a clear motherboard tray. Then we've got the bottom down here will be completely empty and we'll be sticking in four of the uh, the Thermaltake uh, Pacific RL480. So we're going to custom mount one up here, one roughly in the center here as well, and then two on the other side. And then we're just going to have the, uh, the the ring fans from Thermaltake, the new ones. Uh, each of those will be showing through the side. So uh, yeah, we still have a lot to sort of plan on that one, but uh, that's pretty much our concept on that. So it'll have the four 480s, it'll have a dual socket Aces Z on board, and it's going to have the three uh, Aces Strix 980s as well, and we'll be having the uh, the Thermal Take Strix uh, 980 box on as well. So it's probably going to it's probably going to be one of the most craziest builds out there. Um, it's not going to be uh, too much focus on uh, hard drives. We're really just sort of focusing on the uh, the water cooling side of things. So. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it um, for this uh, video. Not too much of, of a review because I've already done the uh, the orange case before. I didn't really want to go into too much. I just wanted to show you some of the, the stock config and some of the things you can do. So I want to thank Thermaltake for sending out all, all this gear, especially for this build, build they're doing. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be able to do all of this. I want to thank you for watching and uh, we will be doing more videos on this build progress as we go along. So stay tuned for our YouTube on Facebook and uh, thanks for watching.